Um, I am, uh, um, or I was until recently, a group leader at the University of Zurich. And uh, what I want to present you today is some activities in my group, uh, which focus on biomedical text mining. Um, uh, I said I was because I'm moving to another institute in Switzerland, and I'm not completely sure how much of this activity I will be able to bring to my new institute. Okay, so these are the projects in which my group in Zurich uh, has been involved recently, um, dealing with text in different formats, the scientific literature, clinical records, social media, veterinary reports, and also helping doing assisted curation and providing some basic tools. Uh, I would love to give you a presentation about each of these projects, but obviously I don't have the time. So I would focus only on two of them. Uh, I, I, I give a quick overview brief first, and then I focus on two of them. Uh, Medmon, uh, which is uh, about social media mining, and uh, a recent participation in share task, and well, I'll use it to present some of the tools that we uh, provide. So um, quick overview, SciMine is about finding in the scientific literature causes of psychological disorders. There are many causes of psychological disorders. Uh, there are kind of very, very, various different types of entities. And the goal was to get from the literature uh, the possible causes of a set of disorders, predefined set of disorders. So we started by creating a corpus. And, uh, and the idea is that, um, for example, a disorder like panic attacks, depression, we want to find associated causes. Um, in um, melano base, another relatively large project, the idea is starting from a disease, for example, melanoma, look into literature for possible causes of the disease, gen genetic causes, say, for example, genes, and uh, treatments or other related factors associated with the disease. So the idea is to mine the literature, find association between a disease, you know, represented by its mesh term, and uh, say, in this case, a gene, maybe we, we, the idea is to use some distance, uh, distance supervision. So uh, um, get from a database, for example, associations of genes and, and the disease, find those mentions in the literature, and use it to interactively construct a database. Another project was a collaboration with uh, Roche, uh, in which the goal was to disambiguate author names. Uh, in the case, we have two homes, uh, at least the same forms or not, seems trivial, but in reality, the, this is not so obvious because uh, in many cases, some information is not provided. And the affiliation might not be there, or the author can change affiliation, so you're no longer sure whether it's the same author or not. And we have several publications about this work. Um, another project, we deal with clinical text, um, clinical reports for a specific case, uh, older patients with uh, uh, which we will take antithrombotic drugs. And the idea is to analyze these uh, electronic records and find information that can help uh, monitor their diseases. Med1 is the one about uh, social media mining. It's a collaboration with Roche again. And uh, the idea is that we want to find information in social media about the patient. I will say a few words more about this in a moment. Uh, another project is a collaboration with the uh, veterinary faculty of the University of Zurich and Bern. And uh, the idea is that um, veterinary doctors write reports about the animals that they inspect. And these reports contain a lot of uh, domain-specific terminology. In this case, it's in German, because these reports are written in German, like clinical records, obviously. They are written in the local language. And we try to map the terminology we find in the reports to a reference ontology, in this case, the UMLS. And this allows us to connect information of the reports to the um, uh, records and also detect back, um, cases in which the same disease is expressed in different ways. And this allows then our partners to do uh, epidemiological studies, distributions of the reports by type of animals, by locations, um, and for example, a, a, a disease spreading in a specific location or a temporal studies of these reports. Another project in which uh, I am a partner is actually um, was led by, by a group in Mexico. That's my connection with Mexico. Uh, the Regulon DB in Cuernavaca, Mexico, which is one of the major databases, um, uh, a life, sci uh, life sciences database. Um, it provides information about E. coli. 
Uh, and um, the goal there is to help the curators to find the information in the papers that they need to curate the literature. Um, we provided a tool called Audien, which allows them to visualize in a paper entities that are potentially relevant for their, for their um, curation tasks, and then um, extract them. Uh, as an example, uh, in a, um, a test application, um, we got from their database the list of genes and, uh, and uh, transcription factors that they are interested in. In this case, MTR transcription factor, MTP is a gene. So these come from the database. We locate sentences that contain those two uh, uh, entities. And we look for factors that influence that relationship. For example, in this case, is in this particular sentence, manganese is a condition. Um, so in the original database, they didn't have these factors. With the help of this, um, with the support of text mining technology, they, will be, they, they were able to add those factors to the database in an efficient way. And so now the database contains these conditions uh, associated with the uh, genetic, uh, with, with the relationship between transcription factor and gene. And um, as part of this process, they are also developing a new version of the interface, that which I've shown you before, which will be more powerful and will allow the curators to easily locate in the text the entities are interested and insert them from the same interface into their database. So this was a quick overview of some of the projects in which I'm involved. Now I'm going to focus specifically on two of them, uh, uh, two applications. One is uh, uh, MedMon, the, um, the, process in collaboration, the project in collaboration with Roche, where we uh, deal with social media content. And the main uh, person working on this project has been Tilia Ellendorf, my student. Um, so in this project, uh, the goals are to um, locate in social media discussions about a specific disease and gather from those discussions information that could be relevant in the process of drug development or uh, uh, monitoring. Examples. Uh, uh, patient perceptions of their specific disease burden, uh, uh, or identify patients that are potential candidates for clinical trials. This is a major problem for pharma company. Clinical trials are very expensive, and you need to locate patients that are willing to do it and that will not break up that clinical trial in the middle. And patients that are particularly active in social media discussing their disease might be good candidates. So in this project, it's a collaboration with another university in Switzerland, and the, our partner provides this interface for downloading the social media, which is mainly uh, tweets, uh, Reddit, and some patient forums. These are the diseases that we monitor, at least initially, and the goal is to deal with different languages, although our main focus so far has been in English. Um, the pipeline of processing starts from the retrieval of the data, uh, Pre-processing of the data with removal of duplicates, filter, uh, filtering of spam, and uh, locate specific diseases, and then extract some specific uh, cases of mentions that we are, in which we are particularly interested. So the, we start with, with the um, initial sources. And um, the initial filtering is, is done by keyword search. So it's very basic. You have some keywords that have been defined for the diseases which we are interested in. And obviously, there will be a lot of post positives. Parkinson can be a name of a person. And this abbreviation, PD, MS, can be many different things. So we need to do a lot of filtering afterwards. We start with um, removal of duplicates. And um, some pre-processing steps, which are very common when you deal with social media, especially tweets, uh, you typically have um, a sub-language in this uh, type of media, where, for example, you have um, usernames that are modified, you have URLs, you have hashtags, and you have camel, uh, camel case expressions, and, uh, and, uh, and so on. Oh, um, um, emphatic expression with duplication of, um, of uh, vowels, um, all these are modified in order to be able to cope with them better. 
then we need to then find the relevance of these microposts. And uh, for example, uh, does the tweet actually mention a disease? Yeah, we have Parkinson, but it's probably not a disease. Um, and um, yeah, we have joint pains, uh, but uh, it's probably just palm. Some, uh, some, uh, somebody uh, trying to sell or to advertise some product. Um, next, when we've done some filtering, we want to do some classification of what we get. Um, in particular, uh, we want to find out if the post is about a specific patient, if, if it has been authored by the patient, by a relative, or by a healthcare provider. Often you have the case that the patient is, uh, himself or herself cannot write a post because simply it's not in the conditions of doing it, but some relative will be in, or some caretaker will be actively uh, discussing the disease. Um, and as part of this, since this, we found this was very fitting to our project, we decided to participate, participate in the social media mining for health, the challenge that um, Graciela and Davy have described uh, earlier today. Uh, in particular, uh, we participated already uh, two years ago, um, but uh, in particular last year, we participated in, the, in task four, which was about uh, generalized identification of personal health experience. So if the post is about the patient actually having a, a, an experience of disease or not. Um, and um, in this particular case, in task four, basically we were given as training material different, two different health conditions, influenza vaccination and infection, and we didn't know what would be the condition of the test set. We knew there would be a condition to be identified, but we didn't know which one. So we approached the problem with, uh, uh, by training um, BERT classifiers on the training data. Uh, we did a um, cross-validation, tenfold cross-validation, training different classifiers on both of the two uh, types. Because remember, we had two different um, conditions in the training material, influenza and infection. And so we train a tenfold classifier, a ten classifier for each of these two cases, but the, that, the size of the data was very different. In one case, we had 10 times more data than in the other case. So we then merged this classifier, this 20 classifier, in uh, a single classifier using different approaches. Uh, and weighting the merging by the size of the training corpus. So the resulting classifier is able to predict the, whatever is the condition in the test set. Um, and we were the best uh, system in this uh, challenge. Yeah. With numerous participants. Um, then the rest of the project, basically, um, we intend to bring this uh, successful approach inside the uh, scope of the project. Uh, but we have other aspects to deal with. Annotate the diseases uh, at the span level and dealing with um, layman terminology. So the same disease can be mentioned um, in uh, social media in uh, using words that are not the standard words used, but that would be used by a doctor. Uh, Angel could be a name from Angelman's syndrome. Uh, recognizing all this, all this um, layman terminology is a challenge. Um, then we have multi-world expressions like troubles falling asleep. It's probably some insomnia problem here. Uh, and the distinguishing between symptoms and effects of the drug. Like uh, she was given painkiller containing epinephrine, and she has not stopped having tremors since the dental appointment. So what is the tremors now the, the symptom that prompts her to take epinephrine, or is the effect of epinephrine? So this is not obviously, not always easy to distinguish. We want also to distinguish some attributes of the patients, like the location, where the patient is, uh, or, or the caretaker the age of the patient, the gender. So we, try, we want to try to classify a bit better what the material that we have. 
some of this is done re uh, relatively in a basic way so far, uh, but we, we, we aim at uh, adding some of the methodologies that we have uh, tested in the shared task. So conclusion of this part, we have implemented an efficient, uh, this is agnostic, retrieval of micropods, agnostic because we were able to show that training on different conditions were, were led us to the best classifier in a different condition. Starting from condition A and B, we were able to detect post relevant to condition C. Um, and then we have all these filtering levels and um, um, detection that are now uh, being implemented as part of the project. So this is um, all what I have to say about this project. I'm happy to answer questions later, but I will take a few minutes to discuss another application of our work. Um, and uh, this gives me a chance to talk, uh, to talk about uh, some of the basic tools that we provide, we develop and provide to the community, make available to the community. And uh, I, I used uh, our participation in another shared task um, as a way to mention these tools. In particular, this was the task organized by uh, University of Colorado. So Kev, I think, was part of the organization. The craft chair task was uh, um, discussed at the BioNLP uh, uh, workshop, which was organized by Jin Dong uh, at uh, M -E -M NLP in November. And um, the goal of this task was to recognize entities in a very large corpus, 67. So the craft corpus contains 67 uh, full text paper um, annotated for different from uh, using entities from many different ontologies. And as part of the task, you we were asked to recognize entities in a hidden set of 30 articles. Um, not only recognize the span of the entities, the mention of the entities, but also disambiguate the entity with respect to uh, the source ontology. So it's entity uh, recognition and, and disambiguation or linking. Last. So the traditional approach for entity recognition and disambiguation is the pipeline approach, where you first recognize the entities, for example, with the sequence tagger. Like you have a disease here, skin, and you have a chemical here. And then, in the second step, you look up these uh, entities, these text that you found in some dictionary, and produce an ID. In this case, is mesh. Uh, obviously, this pipeline approach has several problems because uh, if you fail at the first step, you cannot uh, get anything at the second step. Errors propagate, and so on and so forth. Um, so there are different attempts to uh, combine the two approaches. Uh, this is an example of dissertation at the University of Colorado where encoder uh, is trained on, and encoder decoder architecture is trained to recognize the character sequence and predict the IDs. Seems magic, but seems to work to some extent. Um, another approach that has been tested in the literature is to do the two tasks at the same time, having the input of each task uh, the output of each task providing uh, used as input for the other task. Um, so feedback between the two tasks. Uh, for example, this paper does that. Uh, the problem with this kind of entity is it's very difficult to train. It's very expensive to train. So our own approach, uh, we have used an idea based on the previous um, reference that I mentioned, but we have cut one of the links. So we train only the entity disambiguation step on the basis of the entity recognition step. So it's only one step uh, feedback. And, uh, and we also tested a different architecture based on BioBert, where we have um, BioBert uh, basically uh, trained from two independent models, one um, for detecting spans and one for detecting IDs. So these are two different approaches that we um, we used and, um, and basically in our uh, um, participation to share tasks, we wanted to compare the different approaches. Um, one big problem uh, in this kind of task is that the set of IDs is huge. Because if you have genes, diseases, proteins, 
um, chemicals, you have millions actually of IDs. So you can actually uh, train successfully a, um, a, a system that will be able to recognize all the possible IDs there. Uh, so one way we try to deal with this problem is that we selected a, we analyzed with our entity recognition tool, which I'm going to mention in a moment, a large set of uh, PubMed abstracts, like uh, 100,000 uh, randomly picked, and we uh, uh, identified the most common concepts, that is IDs in that subset, random subset, and we use only those uh, concepts in a pre-training phase. This was for used for the BIOSTM approach. Um, for the BERT approach, instead we use the back-off model, where um, the idea is that uh, the two components, the uh, entity recognition component and the entity link component, uh, cooperate and we can basically do a kind of voting on, on consistency between them. So for example, the, um, so here we have a protein, uh, exokinase 1, um, and uh, spine recognition tells me that this is a protein, and ID recognition tells me also this is a protein, a protein gives me an ID, so we have, uh, we have uh, an agreement, in which case uh, this, is, this is passed uh, on as a, as a solution. If we didn't have the agreement, then we would, we would not accept that that is possible annotation. So, uh, this is based um, or, or behind the scenes, what we have is an efficient uh, lexicon-based entity recognition tool called OGA. Uh, it's uh, freely available. I invite you to um, uh, test it. It provides annotation for different entity types. Um, it's also accessible as an uh, API, so you can simply su submit uh, PubMed IDs, or PubMed Central IDs, and get them annotated in different formats. It's also very efficient. In a competition a couple of years ago, uh, we had the best results. Uh, this competition tested only the efficiencies of some uh, um, text mining system for biomedical literature. Um, now, the problem with all uh, lexicon-based entity recognition system is that the dictionaries get uh, old, get outdated very quickly as the resources improve. Uh, the way we dealt with this, uh, that is that our entity recognition system is tightly integrated with another tool called the BioTermApp, which is an aggregator of terminologies. So the BioTermApp, which can also be used independently, you can find information here, um, takes terminology or takes um, several uh, life science databases as input, or polls them, <coughs> and get extracts from them on the fly relevant terminology. And so the way it works is that every time you, look, you open it on this page, uh, or link provided on this page, it will show you a page like this and check if any of the resources has been modified since the last time we updated it. If it has been modified, it gives you the opportunity to update it. This way we keep our resources always up to date. And Olga basically interfaces directly with this uh, biotherm app, so it can always get the most recent uh, resources. <coughs> Coming back to the competition, um, the results of the competition were evaluated with two metrics. The slot error rate and precision recall and traditional precision recall F1. So I don't have the time to go much into details now, but um, uh, we basically compared all different configurations, not just a, a dictionary-based system, the BioSTM system and the BioBear system. And uh, I would like to say we had the best results in the competition, but then we were cheating because we were the only participant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In other words, you have to work. <laughs> <laughs> to put it that way. <laughs> anyway, we uh, used these uh, diagrams to represent the uh, different system that we evaluated. Where on the bottom you have the F score, and on the top you have the slot rate, uh, error rate, because you you want to maximize your F-score and minimize your slot error rate. And uh, these are the results for the different ontologies, where we compare the different configurations for each ontology. And we had actually quite good results in several cases. Um, 
An interesting aspect of this uh, approach that we implement is that we are able to predict IDs that are not seen in the training data. Uh, because uh, in both approaches, in one we have a pre-training phase in which uh, some IDs are stored in the memory of the neural network. In the other approach, we have the lookup through Augur that will be able to provide uh, IDs that are not present in the training data. Uh, for example, here we have some acetylene receptor recognized correctly as a KB uh, entity. Um, we also looked at the uh, values. These are not the, fine, the values overall. These are the values only for the unseen IDs. And uh, so, uh, for example, this approach, BERT, is capable of recognizing some unseen IDs in some ontologies with uh, precision recall, precision of uh, at 71, uh, and so some, some results are quite interesting. This is only about unseen IDs. Coming to a conclusion now, so um, I presented several projects in which we use this basic te um, technology that, that I also mentioned at, at the beginning, at the, at the end of my talk. Uh, so and in particular, I want to focus on these two tools that we provide and are freely accessible to the community, and we would love to other people use them. So one is the Biotherm app. That, uh, it's an aggregator of uh, resources that allows you to, you can also use it standalone. You can just simply uh, select the, the um, terminologies that you need and download them in a uh, CSV format and use it with your own uh, text mining tool. And OGA, which is an uh, uh, efficient um, entity recognition tool using terminologies provided by Biotermap. And uh, I think we have shown that we mm, can make good use of state-of-the-art technologies for specific approaches in two shared tasks, obtaining very good uh, results. And uh, we are applying these uh, methodologies in various projects and with different type of text, uh, literature, clinical records, social media. And with this, I conclude. Thank you for your attention.